Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Sign up now for a $20 free bet. Just use the code IFLTV24. Sign up now. Terms and conditions apply. Andrew McCart, iPhone TV, delighted again to be joined by Mr. Spencer Firon. Spencer, first and foremost, mate, like I said to you, man, like it's a different room every time I interview you. <laughs> you do you know what I mean? It's like it, you must have a, a good, a, you must be living well in a big house. I must, I, I can only imagine. Uh, oh, we're, we're blessed. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, you know, the rules, the rules is this everything comes from God, everything comes from Allah. So, Alhamdulillah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about the reason why to get you on, Spence, is um, obviously Anthony Joshua, right, after a great win against Otto Wallen, which we spoke about, and you were singing praises on Anthony and this team up with Ben Davison, but now he's up against Francis Ngannou. Now, we saw the, the Tyson Fury fight. You were out in Saudi Arabia for that fight. Um, I just want to get your initial thoughts when you when you saw that that fight was announced, Joshua and Ngannou. Um, what other fight could there be for Anthony Joshua to 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 participate in? You have to also realize um, the PFL. What's it called? The Professional Fighting League, right? Yeah, yeah, PFL. That's who he signed with, I think. Ngannou, yeah. That's, yeah, that's who Ngannou signed with. They've got their big link up out in Saudi Arabia, and what? Where else? And he's and not only that, but you meet Francis Ngannou. I don't know if you met him, but you meet Francis Ngannou. You sit down and talk to the guy. He's genuinely a very, very nice man, right? Um, his demeanor is very cool. He's very humble, um, and it's like he's a man who's very genuine. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big believer in in. You reap what you you reap what you sow. Or you know what I mean? Or well, as the good book, the Holy Quran says, um, Qadr means the will of God. Certain things will happen, and it is the will of God. And it's you're either walking with the most high or you're walking with you're either walking with positivity or you're walking with negativity. This man is a very positive human being, similar to Anti Joshua. Anti Joshua is very positive, right? But I think with Anti Joshua, certain things are more com complex for him because he's been thrusted into this massive spotlight. Mm. So whatever fight would there be for Anthony Joshua to go and take? Let's be realistic. Um, you had um, Deontay Wilder, who has been a fantastic ambassador for boxing. Sorry, can I say for fight? I can't say for boxing because he hasn't really demonstrated the finer arts of the craft or the sport of boxing because he hasn't. He's just like, he's just going to knock you out. Mm. Josie Parker's already been beaten by Anthony Joshua, even though, as I'm saying to you, this Josie Parker Mark II, under the tutelage of Andy Lee, as far as I'm concerned, is a better Josie Parker than the one that fought Dylan White, mm -hmm. Anthony Joshua. He's a better fighter. But you've already been beaten by so the interest wouldn't be that, ooh, what's the interest? Um, then also, which other fight is there going to be for Anthony mm -hmm. Joshua that can hold that market appeal and, and you know what I mean? Or even tickle the palates of the people out in Saudi Arabia. The king of Saudi Arabia is actually a fan of Francis Ngannou, right? And when you get something like that, certain people could think like it's, it's a smash and grab. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Eddie Hearn has been hypocritical. I'm going to be real with you. Because I remember how he rubbished um, Tyson Fury. Right? And then all of a sudden now, he's all... He's on a... He's, he, 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 he's, he's completely U-turned on that. And he's saying, oh, yeah, you know what? Um, yeah, this is, going to be a, this is going to be a fight and all the rest of it. But he did rubbish it. But... Eddie Hearn is a promoter and interest and finance makes for something really great. And I think there's going to be interest in there, but I'm going to be real with you. I think what Francis Ngannou did um, October 28th against um, Tyson Fury was absolutely incredible. I still don't think he won the fight, right? If I'm dealing with boxing. If I'm sitting down as like a 
like these these people who just go down the pub and say, hey, we want to watch a fight. Yeah, yeah. The big African, he done him. No, he never. Let's be real. It was a very, very flat Tyson Fury. As I said, if you take a drink and you shake out the bicarbonated soda, then the drink will be flat. It's still the same drink, but it don't taste the same. Tyson Fury was very flat then. But how could you get up for that fight? You can't get up for it. You're going to be very, very difficult to get up for it because people rubbish it as it being a joke. Mm. That as well. Is it, the Usyk fight was announced three weeks before the fight took place as well. So you've already got in the back of your mind a fight do. in the future. That is that's the worst thing to do. I remember as a kid watching Jim Watt and Jim Watt was saying that you always hated when fighters were preparing for a fight ahead. Mm. They all the fight in hand. Um and and that's we I, I believe that's what happened. That's what I believe. Um that was a very, very bad Tyson Fury that night. But more to do with he was very, very bad because Francis Ngunu is a very, very tough human being. 200 but, pounds as well of muscle. No, no, no. He's, he's proper. He's, he's yeah. a fantastic specimen of a human being. Right? But I'm going to be real with you. He's lacking in the, in the technical departments of boxing. Right? And look at the guys that have given Anthony Joshua problems in his career right nice. exactly he's not a small short even Carlos Takam gave Anthony Joshua trouble them short squat guys they give him trouble you give him someone around about his height you get a dangerous Anthony Joshua and also with the link up now with Ben Davison I could see I need Joshua stoppage in about eight rounds, and he was saying, well, here's a man that's been kicked in the head and never been knocked out. But I just think there's a, there's, there's a lot of body that's been exposed with Francis Ngannou, and if Joshua can go downstairs properly, correctly, but make sure that he, as he's going downstairs, like he's protecting, he's protecting, he's, he's protecting himself so he doesn't get, he doesn't get hit with a left hook. Um, I could see Anthony Joshua stopping Francis Ngannou. And to tell you the honest truth, and a lot of people say, well, I'm not trust this fight, I'm not trust this fight. I'm, I'm just being real. Anthony Joshua, the guys that are beating him, uh, prior up in um, Usyk and in uh, Ruiz, I think they've been in boxing a little bit longer than he has. Mm. Right? A good so, and you, mm. Yeah, you can kind of see it as well. In this fight here, anti Joshua is the one that's going in with the experience, mm -hmm. right? And you don't win ABAs, you don't win uh, European silvers, you don't win Olympic gold medals, right? If you don't know how to fight, you don't. Irrespective that you've been inexperienced, I get it, but it doesn't mean that you can't fight though. Mm -hmm. And anti Joshua can fight, especially now that I can see a newfound belief in him which I was, I'm going to be real with you. If it was announced straight after Francis, straight after the Franklin fight, I would have reservations about this. If it was announced after the Hellenius fight, I would have reservations about this. Right? And irrespective that uh, um, Valen has, was his sparring partner and all the rest of it, it doesn't matter. I know what it's like or the feeling that you have, or how uh, hesitant you are, and how reserved you are when you when you're dealing with coming back from some form of trauma, mm. right? And Anti Joshua was kind of dealing with the trauma of I actually lost to Usyk, and like, would they have to go do but in this boxing match here? I'm gonna be real with you. This is gonna be a grotesque mismatch. Remember, I'm telling you this now, right? This is going to be a grotesque mismatch, and that's me having nothing against Francis Ngannou. You but said in this that with Tyson, fight, we said that with the Tyson fight. Are we going to no, repeat our words yeah, again? I don't know. I just said it with the Tyson Fury fight, you know? I didn't yeah, say that with Tyson. In general, I'm saying we as the boxing community in general, we said this about the Tyson Fury and Ngannou fight. I'm just wondering if we're no. going to repeat our words again. Will Francis Ngannou surprise us? No, it's not a case of like, 
it being a mismatch to the fact of how we're looking at Tyson Fury being a mismatch. Like, this is a joke. We know Tyson Fury blows hot and cold, right? And you always give Tyson... So you give someone lesser than Tyson Fury and he always goes down to their level, yeah? But put that fear of apprehension behind him. It always puts a firecracker underneath Tyson Fury where he's, he's on it. He's proper on it. You can see the focus and everything else. No. Um, this is totally different. Anti Joshua is a complete athlete. And I could see him. Yeah. What does Francis Ngannou do better than, than Anthony Joshua? Because I'm going to be real. If Anthony Joshua the other day boxed Tyson Fury, who turned up in that fight there? Exactly. I would say, no, we're going to give praise to Francis Ngannou because we did think it's going to be a mismatch and blah. But no, if you look on the guy on how he is, no. Mm. But I'm saying on this here, this is going to be this. I could be completely wrong, right? <laughs> but what I'm saying, I can see Anthony Joshua completely obliterating Francis Ngannou. What's good? What I'm, what's intriguing me now is now there's a little bit of tape on Francis Ngannou. I mean, Tyson Fury went into there with no tape on how Francis Ngannou boxed, only the MMA stuff, and obviously a little bit of pad work with Mike Tyson. Now there's a little bit of tape on how. Francis Ngannou approaches the game inside the squared circle, inside the ring. And we know that Ben Davidson and Lee Wiley, they're film study guys. They like to look for little nuances, little gaps that you you have in your game and they'll exploit it. So I'm I'm hoping, well, I'm not hoping, I'm saying that might help Anthony Joshua in this fight, the fact that there is... No, 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 no that's not going to help him at all. You know what's going to help Anthony Joshua is Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua, as long as he does his graph with Ben Davidson properly and he's in tune mentally, I think the only thing that's a problem with Andy Joshua has been mental demons, right? I think they've kind of been eradicated now, right? And I think Andy Joshua's actually finding himself. That's mm -hmm. what I believe, right? I'm not saying that Andy Joshua is the Andy Joshua of old, yeah? But I think he's got an older head now. And I think he can implement the fact that he has an older head, uh, especially when he pops that jab. Mm. Pops that jab and he goes downstairs to the body and like he did against Volley, even though it's totally two different fighters. I can see Anthony Joshua obliterating Francis Ngannou. And I like Francis Ngannou a lot. I really do. But he's had one fight against Tyson Fury, which a lot of people thought they won that fight, mm -hmm. but he did. He did. I'm, gonna be, I'm not hating on him. He didn't. Mm. But I, think, I, I agree with you. I think you need to score the quiet rounds as well. And I think we know Ngannou won the bigger rounds where he knocked him down and he hurt Tyson maybe in the rounds three and six, I think it was. But the quiet rounds, you've got to score them as well. Even though there's not much happening, you do have to score them. And I think Tyson nicked those quieter rounds. And that's, I, I guess that's what you're saying as well. That's the reason why yeah. you Tyson yeah. won, won that fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's going to be completely easy for Anthony Joshua, but I'm telling you, what does Francis Ngannou do better than Anthony Joshua? Apart from maybe punch, and even when we're saying like he punches harder, remember you're doing it with four, four, four ounce mitts instead mm -hmm. of like a ten ounce glove. I'm telling you now that this is going to be it is it's going to be a miss it's going to be a mismatch. Remember, I'm telling you now, <laughs> Spence. I'll clip this. Don't worry. I'll clip this. I'll clip this, and I'll put it out. Don't worry. Um, but we want to give again. I like Francis Ngannou as well. I love his story. The fact that he said, I think, when he left the UFC, that he wants to box Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, and he probably got laughed at by every single person in the combat sport world. Look what's happening now. Within the space of six months, he's already fought Tyson Fury, and he's going to be fighting Joshua in March. I mean, what a story that is. No, no. You know what the major story is? This is the major story. Always believe in yourself and back yourself. And he's done this, right? His highest person ever in the UFC was $600,000, $600, right? He's allegedly going to get just under £20 million. Pounds, <laughs> dollars, sorry, dollars for this fight. He's won. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? He can go back to Cameroon and buy all the sheep and goats and everything else and build up all the boxing gyms and help. He's won. Mm -hmm. He's won, right? Beautiful story, beautiful human being. He's one. But you're not, that's not fooling me. Andy Josh is going to do him. <laughs> uh, you, you touched on um, 
they've set a firecracker up Tyson Fury's sort of butt. You referenced that in a better fighter. So when you're thinking about the Usyk fight, you think he's got that fire, firecracker ready to go and he's, he's going to up his game against Usyk come February 17th? Well, he's, well, he's going to have to, mm-hmm. right? And I'm going to tell you another thing. This thing of a good big and always beating a good little end, right? It's not necessarily the case. As Lloyd Hannigan always used to say to me, it's not whether you're big enough or you're good enough. And Usyk is good enough. And this fight is a spiritual fight. It is a spiritual fight. Mm-hmm. And this is what makes this fight so fascinating because it's not going to be easy for Tyson Fury. But, and also, you want to have to ask yourself, what have those three fights done to Tyson Fury? We don't know. Mm-hmm. Those three fights with Deontay Wilder, we don't know because we also we saw what those three fights with Tyson Fury done to Deontay Wilder. Mm-hmm. Right? And 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 Fury can hit, but he's not a hellacious hitter like Deontay Wilder. So we don't know. But I would still think that Tyson Fury on his A game will outpoint Usyk. And it's not even the case of like being too big, also to the fact of him being too clever. Like people are looking at Tyson Fury's last performance and thinking, wow, oh my goodness gracious. Well, hold up a second. Usyk didn't look so fantastic to me against Daniel Dubois. All right, and that's the truth. Mm-hmm. So, right, at least uh, he didn't. Um, Tyson Fury never grumbled about no body shot was rolling on the floor like he was dying, and it was a body shot. But it's another story for another day. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, not too rightly sure. I think Tyson Fury is going to be on it because he knows what this fight means. The last undisputed heavyweight champion was Lennox Lewis, November thirteenth. 1999. Now we have an opportunity to see another undisputed world champion. And Tyson Fury is that guy who embellishes himself in the historical value of the sport. Mm -hmm. He really does. Even though I don't care about the belts and blah, blah. Believe me, I grew up with travelers, right? And all of them knew boxing. Not all of them could box, but they all knew boxing. That's the God's only truth. Tyson Fury is no different, but the difference with Tyson Fury, he actually really can box. Mm-hmm. So, um, I would have him beating Usyk on points. Spence, what's the ideal scenario, right? For me as a boxing fan, take this media guy, whatever you want to call me, out the equation, right? For me as a boxing fan, I really, really want to see Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua. They have to fight each other before they retire. Is the ideal scenario, Fury beats Usyk, they're obviously going to get the rematch on. He rematches, Usyk does it again. Joshua fights Ngannou, beats Ngannou, maybe go on to fight somebody like Hergovic for the vacant IBF if he doesn't already fight Parker for that or whatnot. He beats Hergovic, and then we finally get Tyson Fury and Joshua start of 2025, maybe the spring or 2025. Is that the ideal scenario for you? Um, being British it is, but also you, you can never ever write off Usyk ever. No. You can't, right? And you can't. He's he's superb. Usyk is fantastic. I just think uh, uh, up for it, Tyson Fury will will be Usyk, mm-hmm. and he's got to be up for it. If he's not up for it, then forget about it. Who's got a better box than IQ, Fury or Usyk, or the even? You know what? Um, I would say I would say Usyk's got the better boxing IQ because he can do little short, subtle things that if your eyes ain't really trained, you ain't really seen what he's doing. Mm-hmm. I would say, but the one that demonstrates the better boxing IQ to the unlearned eye is Tyson Fury. Mm-hmm. And here's another question for you then, Spence. Because you are you like the intricates of boxing. You like to see the little nuances here and there and everywhere. What's the keys to victory for Tyson Fury? You mentioned size doesn't matter, but if they have sort of almost, they're, they're not too far apart in boxing IQ, footwork, maybe lateral movement as a heavyweight. Does size... The double, jab, of- the double jab for Tyson Fury, right? Mm-hmm. The double jab for Tyson Fury coming with the left hook is going to be the key shot for Tyson Fury in this fight against Usyk. Left hook to the body. Pardon me? Left hook to no. the head or body? No, left hook to the head. Left hook to the head. 
Um, that is, as far as I'm concerned, um, it'll be the straight right hand to the body, as we saw when he got hit with a straight right hand. But it can't be a straight right hand early. It's got to be later on when when he when he grapples with him, he leans on him, he drag, he draws out his legs and stuff like that. Then that's what I could see. Furthermore, I could maybe I could see uh, uh, Tyson Fury stopping Usyk, but it's got to be a Tyson Fury that's properly on it. Mm. And for Usyk, I mean, again, like I said to you, if, if, how does he how does he stop a big man like that? Because we know with the Dubois and looking at the Joshua fights, we know if you put it on Usyk, he doesn't quite like it, whether it be the body shots or leaning on him. But he does have good footwork where he can dance around the ring for twelve rounds quite easily. And um, so the key is to take his legs away. So how do you stay away from somebody like Tyson Fury that size? Just keep dancing, keep moving? Is it simple? No, because look, no, um, it won't be. It'll be little subtle movement. It'll be little subtle side steps. Because you see like how Usyk, Usyk kind of fights with mm -hmm. that motion there, right? Mm -hmm. But as he's fighting with that motion there, he's got, as he, as he dips over, he's got to trigger out that jab and, and step over with it. Mm -hmm. As he, as he yeah, from, his, from his southpaw position, as he throws out his right jab, he got to step across and then throw his left hand power shot. I believe because Tyson Fury's been susceptible with those. He's also been susceptible with, with, with overhand shots, but I would say that if Usyk can do that by just um, being sneaky and like stealing, stealing points, you never know. He could beat Tyson Fury on points. Because you could actually steal points just by having that style and 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 Usyk, I'll tell you what Usyk's very good at. Usyk is very good at making you follow him mm -hmm. so he can throw the shots on you. Now, whether you're gonna do that with somebody six foot nine, I don't know, right? But it's the one that is prepared to omit dominance. And what I mean to omit dominance is by not going into that ring when the bell goes and showing any form of fear mm -hmm. because this is going to be very, very technical and this is going to be very, it's going to be a cerebral fight simply because you've got two good thinkers in there. Mm -hmm. So who can outthink the other guy? But for Tyson Fury's size and everything, he's slightly faster than Usyk. So if he's faster than Usyk and he's bigger than Usyk, then Usyk's in trouble. Spence, I'm really, really excited. And I think right now, with what we've seen in 2023, we had a good year in 2023 with the start of the year with Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia and Spence Crawford and then even the Yard Better Beer fight. I really like that fight. And then we came into like the Chris Eubank, Liam Smith and all them sort of fights. And then the tail end of the year, we're seeing the fights that we want to see. Now, 2024 that we're in now, I was going to say 23, it's kicking off quite well. And there's a fight that, if you ask me about this fight, maybe beginning of December, I would have said this was an exciting fight, an explosive fight. And there's a fight that's rumoured to be on the undercard of Joshua and Ngannou, and that's Wilder versus Zhang. Now, like I said to you, beginning of December, you would have said to me that fight, told me that fight was happening, I would have said, exciting, sign me up. Somebody's getting knocked out. But do you think maybe with that loss to Parker, has, has Wilder lost his... Is is a killer instinct is probably the wrong word, that's probably a wrong choice of words for me to say, but has he lost that uh, that little bit of aggression that he used to no, have to want to knock you out? What, what Wilder, what Wilder has lost, I would say to you, is that he's literally become civilized now. Mm, that's that's a fair way. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's a good, good way. I like that. Yep. Right. And as he's become civilized, he's become a great civilian. Mm -hmm. Right? So you've got to think about it. So he's be He's become heavyweight champion of the world, right? He's made a shed load of money, right? And you can see he's a doting father. He loves his kids, loves his missus, right? You have won. What else is there for you to do, right? And yeah. no, no, I'm, I'm going to be, no, seriously, I'm going to be rude. With you. What else is there for him to do? And the thing that made him so dangerous was his unpredictability. Mm -hmm. You take it away, we can predict what boxers are doing. Mm. Right, and Manny Scott tried to turn him into a boxer, right? And that's what he's done, he's tried to turn him into a boxer, so it is what it is. Does the fight so, excite you, Vince? Does it excite you? Though, right? it's still, it's because you never know if don't tell one that comes in, we should knock him out. But I rate Zhang a lot, so mm. because I rate him so much, I can see um Zhang 
maybe even stopping Deontay Wilder. Hmm. Spence, obviously, right now, when we look at the current heavyweight scene, um, when you look at the guys that we've spoke about, they're probably all of them are in the mid-30s, going in the late 30s. Zhang's in his 40s. Um, when you look at the heavyweight scene right now, I know Daniel Dubois is 26, so he's probably the guy you might you might say to me. But who in the heavyweight division coming through is going to carry that torch when all these guys retire? And I mean, Moses of two months, 18. We've got Jared Anderson out in the US. But is there anyone I've missed that's caught your eye in the heavyweight division right now? You think there's, only one, there's only one kid to talk about. And you mentioned it. That's Moses Otama. That's, that's the only kid to talk about. I'm telling you this now. He's going to be heavyweight champion of the world. I'm telling you that now. And uh, trust me, and I'm telling you this now, that he's a special, special talent. I'm speaking to you guys. Like Martin Bowers will say, look, Spence, I've seen them all come through in the gym, all of them. Like Lennox, Bruno, Irby either. None of them, none of them, Spence, were as good as this kid. And I want to say to you, shut up. No one ain't better than Lennox is. But... We didn't see Lennox as an 18-year-old. Mm. This Moses Otama is the real deal. You know what? And you know what? If you look in his eyes, he's a very intensive human being. Mm. And when you see someone who's intensive like that, I just I just hope that he, he doesn't like to party and he doesn't like to drink because he don't like none of those kind of things. That kid, the stars, the sky's the limits for him. He's going to be, he, trust me, he's bad. Mm. And you gotta know, I'm 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 in Dodds and 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 Tundi's down at Yoko say, come down to Yoko, you come out saying guy down to Yoko. And Baba Tundi a giant trainer and the yard and manager. He says, that brother there? I said, no, because I saw him out in Saudi Arabia. You know what I mean? And and I and I said, Francis, you got money. And like Francis is hyperventilating. He's that good. He's mm. he's he's an incredible fighter, man. Now, I'm gonna be real. There's nobody that I None of these new youths up who are coming through right now, none of them can't talk to this youth. It's going to be, a, he's going to, not putting pressure on him, but he, <laughs> we could be looking at a future heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, listen, I don't know if you've watched my podcast with young Joe Pugh, but that's exactly almost what I'm saying as well. I'm really excited about Moses Atuma. And I said the exact same thing about what you said with, with Anthony Joshua reference. Where does he go? He can't go anyone. And, well, there's not really anyone there from the wild that fights lost at Sparkle. Tyson Fury Usyk are uh, uh, already tied up. Josh, yeah. did anyone really want a Dubois fight, a Joyce fight, a Parker fight? Does that have that markability that everyone's talking about? No. So I think the Nganu fight makes sense, business sense. It makes great business sense right now. And uh, whether that be a, a tune-up fight, a warm-up fight for a big fight in the future, who knows? But yeah, I agree with basically the majority of what you said there, Spence. And uh, it's not really... I mean, maybe I've got a boxing brain after all. I don't know. <laughs> You do have a boxing brain. Don't 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 put yourself down, Andrew. Listen, Spence. Listen, I've had you for nearly half an hour already again. But is there anything else you'd like to add, my brother? No, nothing much. But if you are free on this Saturday, which is the thirteenth, down at the Magna Arena in Rotherham, uh, the USC superstar um, Hamza Chaimeth, uh, he is. A special guest for the was it Alamedina three one three charity, which we're doing a fundraise for the people in Palestine and the people of the Gaza. Um, I did the auction uh, for it on the weekend, and we raised in total three hundred thousand pounds. That uh, I mean, which was really really good guys and. Um, Who's it? The young Islamic debater who's everywhere these days, uh, Muhammad Hijab. He he had a little grappling. Him and Hamza had some, you know what I mean? They had, a, <laughs> they, had, they, had a, they had a little grapple. Um, and you know what? And he raised a lot of money. It was great. But it's happening again this weekend. If you haven't bought your ticket, you know what I mean? Um, just go to uh, 313 Almadana. Um, charity, um, they're good people. They're certified people as well. Every penny goes to helping our needy in the Palestine. So I'm honoured to be another guest and hopefully we can do even better numbers down in Sheffield. Friends, you know, I always uh, love talking boxing with you. Uh, like you've got a great boxing brain on you and it, it really makes my brain work as well, which, which, which I love. Um, and listen, 
as always, I appreciate your time, especially on a Monday evening. You've probably got better things to do than speak to me. Yeah. Snowing up in Scotland? Is it snowing? It's, it's cold. It's minus four. I, I admit, it's snowing in London, so it's mad. It's snowing. In, in the Highlands, it's snowing. In the Highlands, it's, it's uh, the roads are cold and everything up there. Always snowing in the Highlands. <laughs> it's minus four here. It's just frosty, man. It's like really, really cold. So, But listen, that's why I look like this, Spencer. I'm really 21 years old. The weather just beats you down up here. Right, you look good for your age, man. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't. This is Spence. I appreciate your time as always, brother. And uh, no doubt I'll Bro. catch you very, very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Sign up now for a $20 free bet. Just use the code IFLTV24. Sign up now. Terms and conditions apply.